Hey friends, welcome back to the channel with another movie reaction. Today we are watching Dune. Super excited for this movie. I've loved Zendaya in everything I've seen her in. She's a star in Euphoria, fantastic. Spider-Man, The Greatest Showman, she's really great in those as well. Uh, one person I haven't actually seen before is that Timothy Chalamet son of a... My wife is in love with this Timothy Chalamet son of a bitch. So that clip is the only thing I even know about him, so looking forward to seeing him in something for the first time. Uh, I actually wasn't going to react to this movie because HBO Max has given me two copyright strikes the last two times I've tried to watch something of theirs, uh, Wonder Woman 1984 and Mortal Kombat. Uh, but those strikes have expired and I'm going to try to make it work this time, maybe by darkening the footage, maybe by putting a filter over it or some words over it, I don't know. Uh, but I'm excited to get into this. Didn't read the books, but I know that a lot of people look at this as the beacon of sci-fi. And so I don't even know the basic concept of this movie, so I'm ready. Uh, full reaction on Patreon in the link in the description below. Let's get started. My planet Arrakis is so beautiful when the sun is low. You can see spice in the air. Spice. The Harkonnens came long before I was born. By controlling spice production, they became obscenely rich. Richer than the Emperor himself. Richer than the Emperor? Whoa. They just popped out of the ground like daisies. Yikes. Holy crap. One day, by Imperial decree, they were gone. Oh. Off to mine another planet for spice. If you want it, make me give it to you. Use the voice. Mom, I just woke up. Make me give it to you? With his mind? Give me the water. The glass can't hear you. Come on, me. Give me the water. Give me the water. Whoa. Almost. Almost? Almost? You look tired. More dreams? Her? No. Visions. Long exposure to spice has given the tribe their characteristic blue eyes. Oh. The eyes of Ibad. They are dangerous and unreliable. Somehow doubt that. Attacks make for the Fremen. Spice preserves life and brings enormous health benefits. Whoa. Spice is used by the navigators of the Spacing Guild to find safe paths between the stars. Without spice, interstellar wow. travel is impossible. That is a very multi-purpose thing. Smile, Gurney. I am smiling. Thanos! How much will it cost them? Three guild navigators, a total of 1.46 million 62 salaries round trip. The eye roll makes him into a calculator. By the grace of Shaddam IV of House Carino, ascendant to the golden lion throne of Padisha Emperor of the known universe, I stand before of you, the universe. Herald of the chain. House Atreides shall immediately take control of Arrakis and serve as its steward. Do you accept? What is he going to say? No? The Emperor asks us to bring peace to Arrakis. Peace. House Atreides accepts. Duncan. Oh boy. Hey. <laughs> Duncan. You're going to Arrakis tomorrow. With the advanced team. Yes, I'm going to Iraq. Jason Momoa. I'd like you to take me with you. <laughs> Can I trust you with something? Always, you know that. You had a vision. Okay. Those eyes. So? I saw you. With the Fremen. So I do find them. There you go, that's a good omen right there, right? He sees you with them. Me and you. You want some muscle? I did? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> hey. I've been training my whole life. What is the point if I'm not allowed to you face an actual why, risk? You know why, the future of House Atreides. And Grandfather fought bulls for sport. Yes. And look where that got him. <laughs> the great houses look to us for leadership. And this threatens the Emperor. By taking Arrakis from the Harkonnens and making it ours, he sets the stage for a war. Making an alliance with the Fremen. That's what I've sent Duncan Idaho to arrange. Uh huh. What if I'm not dead? In the future of House Atreides. Your grandfather said, "A great man doesn't seek to lead; he's called to it." And he answers. And if your answer is no, you'll still be the only thing I ever needed you to be. 
Thomas then. Hmm. That's some interesting writing. I'm on board for it. <laughs> Whoa. What the heck? Come on. Oh man. <laughs> I have you. I I but look down, my lord. You'd have joined me in death. Ooh. I see you found the mood. <laughs> Arrakis belonged to House Harkonnen. Eighty years of owning the spice fields. Can you imagine the wealth? They're not human, they're brutal. Oh man. That doesn't sound good. The last of our ships have left Arrakis. It's done. Very good. Why though? Why would they just leave? Uncle, how can we let this happen? When is a gift, not a gift. The traitor's voice is rising. And the Emperor is a jealous man. Oh. Oh. A dangerous. That was an interesting bit of editing there. Fanciest nightlight I've ever seen. She wants to know about your dreams. Ooh. How does she know about my dreams? Leave us. You must do everything about what her mother tells you. You dismiss my mother in her own house. Come here. Ooh. Put your right hand in the box. Your mother bade you obey me. <laughs> Defiance. Poison needle. Instant death. Remove your hand from the box, and you die. It's in the box. Pain. Pain. <laughs> Sick to her stomach. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the mind killer? Enough. Can I take my hand out now? Yay. If you had been unable to control your impulses like an animal, we could not let you live. You inherit too much power. Whoa. Not because I'm a duke's son. Because you are Jessica's son. Do you often dream things that happen just as you dreamed them? Not exactly. Goodbye, young human. I hope you live. <laughs> Thank you? Young human? What are you? He wields our power. He had to be tested to the limits. Wow. So much potential wasted in a male. But you in your pride thought you could produce the Kwisatz Haderach. Our plans are measured in centuries. We wow. have other prospects. A path has been laid. Let's hope he doesn't squander it. <laughs> it's all part of the plan. That kind of hurts to find out. Why couldn't I have just been your son? Got a very different sentiment from his father. Leave your memorabilia at home! <laughs> I suppose if you don't think you're coming back. <laughs> I don't know why the bagpipes are so comical to me. I guess it answers the question to what is the most obnoxious way to arrive on a planet? Bagpipes! Don't be fooled by the welcome. They follow their old master's rules, mandatory attendance. That's bargain and love out there. Oh. Whoa. They're all gonna fly. Oh my god. Wow. Place feels very monochromatic. Um, um, seems like not everybody's happy to see you. Whoa. Harkin and Aiton were submitted into that hole six weeks ago. What? Ran the hunter seeker through a water pipe. My honor demands. They tried to take the life of my son. I don't give a damn about your honor. You want absolution? Go catch some spies. Your grace. <laughs> Wow. There's no satellite, Sir Rarakis. Our traders will die in the dark. 
Duke Leto Atreides means nothing to our order. But his wife is under our protection, and by extension, her son. Oh. Allow them the dignity of exile. I'll give you my word. We will not harm them. What good is your word? If the Duke's son lives... No, Atreides will live. The desert takes the weak. My desert. Whoa! My Iraqis. Take care of them, they're friends. Duncan! You're alive! Aww. How was it hidden? It's underground. Arrakis is filled with caverns. How big was the place? I'd say 10,000 people. And there are Whoa. hundreds of sieges. Whoa. Millions of Fremen. The Harkonnen estimate was 50,000 on the whole planet. <laughs> the Fremen, they fight like demons. Desert power. Desert power. Duncan. Well done. Thank you, my lord. <laughs> Good job surviving. Here has a knife. Hold. <clears throat> Thank you, Stilgar, for the gift of your body's moisture. We accept it in the spirit in which it was given. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Wow. <laughs> glad you've come. <laughs> I believe. Name what you want. If it's in my power to grant, I'll give it and ask for nothing. Mm -hmm. wow. I ask for this. Do not seek our sieges. I'll leave the desert to the Fremen. You will address the Duke as my lord or sire. Journey, just, just a moment. <laughs> the Emperor. I cannot promise not to travel into the desert if duty compels me. But your sieges will be yours forever. And you will never be hunted while I govern here. That's very honorable. I must go. That's all I have to say to you. Won't you stay? Oh. We would honor you. She, she. Ooh. Whoa. You used to lift it? Huh. Thank you for the stole suits. They are Fremen make. The best. With your permission, sire, I must check the integrity of your suits. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's all right. <laughs> Even this early in the morning. You wouldn't survive two hours without one of these. It cools the body and recycles the water lost to sweat. Recycles Your it. Your body's movements provide the power. Inside wow. the mask, you've, you've worn a steel suit before. No, this is my first time. Your desert boots are fitted slip fashion at the ankles. Who taught you to do that? It seemed the right way. Wow. Dust cloud. One of your harvesters. You can tell from this distance? Uh, oh, okay, I guess. I guess. That makes sense. Worm always comes? Always. They're drawn by rhythmic noises. Oh, Why boy. Why do you shield the crawlers? A shield's a death sentence in the desert. It attracts the worms and drives them into a killing frenzy. Wow. No shields. Got it. Is that a worm? Yes. You have good eyes. Yeah. She Sorry, needed binoculars for that. Ajax Prepare to be in 30 seconds. Whole thing's gonna get picked up. Wow. Uh-oh. How many men on that crawler? Crew of 21. Our ships can take six each. It's still three short. We'll find a way. Wow. Ooh. The dive. Shield generators weigh 100 kilos each. Yes, Gurney, have our escorts throw out the shield generators. Yes, sir. And Paul, I want wow. to the back of the thopter. Guide them in. Delta Ajax now. Quick thinking, Paul. Seven men. The, the, the mask? Should you be putting it on? I appreciate the cinematography, but let's get a move on. <laughs> we got a full out of spice. We can't just leave. Damn the spice! I want every man off that crawler now! Whoa! Don't get swallowed up yourself. Did you just... <laughs> last minute. Last second. Whoa! How are we making it out of this? Oh wow. <laughs> I think you're gonna have wars with your son. Spice is a psychoactive chemical. You seem to be sensitive. Evidently. You'll be fine. 
<laughs> if you say so. I had a vision. Her. Smallest hint of a smile. Ooh. Well, that's fitting with what she said earlier. Who will our next oppressors be? I saw my death. I know you're pregnant. <laughs> you can't know that. <laughs> I bet you know that. Visions. What the heck? Oh. But the visions don't have to come to pass. The way he sees them. Will you protect our son? With my life. I'm not asking his mother, I'm asking the Bene Gesserit. <laughs> Why are you having these thoughts? His son nearly died. So his father does know. Leto does know. Oh. Just paralyzed, but still able to look around. Oh. Oh. Ah, damn it. What? Jeez. Close the doors on them. Smush them all. Ah. Uh, coming in from behind. I was about to say they have the high ground, but now they no longer do. to push down on. Yikes. Just gonna go down the line by yourself. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you can't say that after dropping them. Jeez. Beautiful and horrifying. Oh, no, 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 no. Is there an eject button? You've never had a highborn. You? Benny Jester ain't on highborn. She's highborn enough for me. Wow. Let don't you dare touch my mother. <laughs> Oh. Remove her gag. <laughs> Shut up. Damn. <laughs> Remove her gag. Kill him. Oh wow. Nora, oh. They've crippled the ship. God damn it. Wow. And lower the shields. I deliver the Duke and his family. And what was I to do for you? Deliver my wife from her agony. I said I'd set her free. That you could join her. So join her. Jeez. Oh. Well, that was potent. So who's next in command after this? Whoa! 
You're alive? <sighs> Damn it. And time for another trip. You would think that she doesn't trust him. Or he doesn't he won't trust her much. Given what oh man, those people could just pop it out of the sand like He's still alive. Whoa. Responding to specific frequencies. Aww. <laughs> yep. Found immediately. Ecological testing station. They were meant to tame the planet, free the water locked beneath the sands. Arrakis could have been a paradise. Then a spice was discovered. And suddenly, no one wanted the desert to go away. Uh. Kenna, we find still suits to. Who are you to the front? Line? Answer my question. <laughs> What are we doing? Would you bear witness? Testify that the Emperor has moved against us here. If they believe me, there would be general warfare between the great houses and the Emperor. Chaos. Is it matter? Imperium. And suppose I presented the Emperor with an alternative to chaos. And the Emperor has no sons, and his daughters are yet to marry. You'd make a play for the throne. <laughs> the Emperor feared the Atreides. He brought you here to kill you. What don't you understand? As Emperor Dr. Kynes, I can make a paradise for Arrakis with a wave of my hand. <laughs> oh, recycled water. Okay, that makes sense. But they're using the spit and recycling it. Isn't that the same amount of water? I don't... Okay. What now? Did you lay a trap? Yay, trap. No! Again! No! Again, no! Oh, man. Oh. We have to go. We have no choice. God damn it. Yeah. Duncan. <laughs> Crap. <sighs> Surely you could fit three in there. Someone sit on someone's lap. Oh. Wow. Call the worm. She's just gonna hitch a ride on it? Is that what's going on here? Oh, damn it. God damn it. <sighs> bring it, bring it. Feels very much like they're on their own. Oh man. Into the storm. Ah. Oh no, it's getting jammed. And a calm washes over them. 
We must move with the flow of the process. We must join it. Ah. Wow. Is this meant to heal the Baron? We chase them into a Coriolis storm. Winds at 800 kilometers an hour. Gurgle, gurgle. Nothing survives such a storm. Gurgle. <laughs> oh. God damn it. So it's done, finally. Now I only have one requirement. Income. So squeeze rabbit. Yes, Uncle. Uncle Freeman. Kill them all. They're a lot more than you think. Uh oh. That. Uh oh. <laughs> Things are going swimmingly. This isn't flying, this is falling with style. I suppose that's as good a landing as you could have hoped for. It's lucky he's a natural at adapting to this environment. Don't be frightened. Even a little desert mouse can survive. It turned into her voice. Follow the friend. Follow the friend. I will show you the ways of the desert. Come with me. Desert power. Don't we have to walk a certain way? To avoid the worms? I can see green over there. You can? That means Fremen live there. Where did you see greenery? After dark, we're about to enter worm territory. Oh, only in worm territory. Walk like regular humans, at least according to the film books back home. This is endless. So much sand and desert. Oh, just seeing the scale of that, jeez. Yeah. Well, that's not what you want. They're sitting still. Is it just passing through? I'm not coming for them. He's from sand. Uh oh. Run. To where? Where? What? What can you do at this point? Oh God. Oh, to the rocks. Oh boy. Oh. Use the voice on it. it. Sounded like it was laughing. Someone set off a thumper. Ah. Oh. To draw it away. Yep. It's him. Isn't it? Stolgar. He does not speak or act like a weakling. Hmm. Nor did his father. My thumper saved his life. The boy is young. He can't learn our ways. He may have sent to Harry. But the woman what? isn't trained. Whoa. Why didn't you say you were a weirding woman and a fighter? Our conversation ran short. <laughs> peace, woman. Peace? I You're calling for peace now? Everything's fine now? <laughs> Alright. I <laughs> guess. Oh, ah, yeah! I would not have let you hurt my friend. Ooh. Hi. Oh. Hello, friend. You talk like a leader. But the strongest leads. She bested you. Oh. I oh. Look the untold. But he's 
friend. He's supposed to be a friend. Oh, he sees how it plays out. Oh. I don't believe you're the Lisa Al Gahib, but I want you to die with honor. Here is a knife. <laughs> Where's the Outworlder? Chill, man. Jonas is a good fighter. He won't let you suffer. He won't let you Tell suffer. You. you should welcome my blade. This world will kill you. Quicker this way. <laughs> I'm doing you a mercy. But killing you now. Oh, <laughs> yield! She toying with him. No. He doesn't want to kill him. No, never killed him. You're gonna beat him into submission. <laughs> Take me seriously? Is that what that yells about? Oh, the first blood he drew isn't even blood he wanted to draw. Thanks for the knife, friend. If you'll have us. You Desert will. power. I thought he was supposed to be your friend! Follow the friend! Wee! Oh, that's so cool. There's your power. This is only the beginning. <laughs> yeah, there's a part two! Right? Right? Wow. Fascinating, fascinating movie. And by the time you're watching this, it has been confirmed we're getting Dune Part 2. Super awesome. And uh, yeah, this movie was great. There's so much lore and backstory. You can feel so much bubbling under the surface. And there's so much to expand on. I got a similar feeling to early Game of Thrones where I just love, love the world building. Uh, two movies honestly doesn't feel like it'll be enough. I know there are more books, so... Do they continue making movies after part two and make two movies per book? I don't know. Uh, but the director, Dennis, I do not know how to pronounce his name, uh, really understands how to make cinematic magic. Uh, I've only seen one of his other movies, Arrival, but he does a great job there. And here he has so much to work with. And with book to movie adaptations, there's always going to be something that gets left out. And I'm sure it can have been easy to pick and choose. And... Yeah, I just have to commend him for being able to communicate so much about this world, uh, the mechanics. All of it has to be explained in a coherent and compelling way. Uh, so the screenplay also gets mad props too, and it feels like a monumental task to explain this world. Uh, honestly, it feels like it would have been better as a TV series, possibly, but as a movie, they did a fantastic job with it. Um, the early part definitely is a slow burn. I think an hour had passed and most of it had just been set up, but I didn't really mind at all because everything is just really, really interesting. All the characters are great. Uh, we had an all-star cast. And even though we didn't get to see that much of Paul like spending time with these people in his life, uh, like with Thanos, Gurney, uh, and Duncan Idaho, Dr. Yue, uh, you could feel like a deep history there, a lot of trust, a lot of uh, chemistry there. So very well done. Um, that the fight scene uh, was a visual treat uh, when he was training with Gurney, but it was also expository on how exactly the shields uh, shields work in this world. So they mixed a lot of world building with uh, action as well at the same time. So I really appreciate that. Um, but this general setup of the film is really interesting. Uh, a lot of little details that I really, really like. Um, it's cool how the shields work. There's that guy... Uh, also working for Leto, whose eyes rolled into the back of his head, and he became a calculator, essentially. Which, what the heck, that's really cool. Uh, and then there's the Bene Gesserit, a uh, terrifying group. Uh, and then the box. What's in the box? Pain. And the threat of death if he were to pull his hand out with that poison needle right next to his neck. And uh, we also have the Harkonnen, also very terrifying. Uh, the Baron, being able to float like that. The thing is, even though he's not, like built like uh his nephew uh dave batista uh, he's still incredibly physically imposing you just he he feels like he just oozes like raw power and uh the silhouette that he casts when he floats up into the air for the first time is chilling um and yeah th there's so much interesting stuff going on the fremen and their ways uh i can't wait to find out more about them about desert power and stilgar spitting at the ground before leto and duncan 
Uh, and the whole, yeah, that was really, really, that was a really funny scene. Uh, Duncan understood that it was a sign of respect. Using moisture in such a way on a desert planet is a sign of respect. So that makes sense. Um, but it was also very hilarious as well. And then Duncan sp spat and then Leto spat. <laughs> and they just take turns spitting in front of each other. It's fantastic. Um, one thing that's really important about this movie is Paul's visions, of course. Uh, he did see Duncan Idaho die and he did die eventually. But very many of the things he saw never came to pass or will never come to pass. And... It was like he was seeing just different possibilities of what could happen. And what's interesting here is that just seeing that, having those visions, makes it possible to change that outcome. Because first we saw Chani stab him, but instead she offers him her knife instead. Uh, I wonder if her, I wonder actually if her stabbing him was a sort of metaphorical death that she calls on him. Like he becomes a different person and you have to die to become a different person sometimes. That's the metaphorical death that people refer to. So yeah, um... He also uses that knife to kill Jameis. Um, it's the first time he's ever had to kill a person. Uh, he helped He helped his mom kill those Harkonnens who were going to dump them in the middle of the desert. But uh, for him to actually be the one to do it. Um, and it was actually probably extra difficult to kill Jameis because uh, his vision, in his vision, Jameis saved him. Or because of his vision of Jameis, he and his mother were able to live uh, through that sandstorm. And Jameis was a friend. So uh, when he challenged Paul to a fight uh, to the death. I was like, wait, but he's supposed to be friend, right? Uh, but Paul has access to the wisdom Jameis would have uh, imparted to him through his visions anyway. So yeah, he saw Jameis tell him to essentially ride the wave when he was in the storm with his mother. So I have to wonder if it's um, his visions are tied to a sense, a sense of destiny because there is this uh, Fremen folklore. There's this Fremen like prophecy of uh, some chosen one coming and uh, turning the tides. So yeah, I wonder if his visions are enabling that. Um, and Paul's visions, um, do the time, does the timeline change and Jameis can die because Jameis is no longer needed to give Paul advice? Um, that would be very chicken egg, right? Um, the fact that because James, uh, Paul already understands the lessons that Jameis uh, can teach him, thus destiny, thus fate, doesn't need Jameis alive anymore. Could that be possible? Um, or are Paul's visions of an alternate timeline or timelines or just possibilities of what could have happened uh, in this world? And uh, of course, the most powerful vision, him and Chani aboard that ship, uh, his house carrying out a religious fanatical war in his name, in his father's memory. And Paul becomes so afraid of this vision that he even lashes out against his mother for giving him this power for... Uh, being part of the B B Bene Gesserit. Um, and yeah, he's so afraid of this vision that he sees that even, yeah, it just overwhelms him so much. He has this overwhelming fear of becoming this murderous religious tyrant waging war. Um, and that has to change his decisions going forward because he's so afraid of it. Uh, it does feel on some level that his visions are guiding him. Like the vision instilling that fear in him of becoming that man is going to be a big factor in preventing him from becoming that man, right? And uh, so what does that mean for the vision he had of Chani stabbing him? I would think it would mean that he's a little bit more cautious of her. Uh, but he also sees the chemistry they have with each other. So um, yeah, regardless of if the vision holds true or not, they're affecting his decision making. They're giving him more information to act on. And he knew his mother was pregnant before she barely knew. So yeah, it's really fascinating. Um, there's also the possibility that these are like metaphorical visions. Like Jameis was supposed to show him the way of the desert as a friend. Uh, but in a way, he does show him the way of the desert, uh, first through the vision, vision, and then by challenging him to a fight that teaches him about the uh, the desert ways and teaching him how to kill for the first time. So, yeah, I really want to see how it all works out in the next film. Uh, so many great but tragic moments in this movie, too. The way Leto went out, uh, Dr. Yue's wife taken and used as a hostage to make him betray Leto and House Atreides, but... Baron already the Baron already killed his wife and uh, winds up killing him as well. So he betrayed them for nothing, which really sucks. And uh, Leto biting down to create that toxic fume sadly wasn't enough to kill the Baron. Oh, that's really disappointing. Um, and the sad part is he died not knowing whether Paul or Jessica made it. Uh, the doctor did say he'd do whatever he could for his son, but Leto had no idea if they actually succeeded in getting away. And then as if that wasn't enough, 
Duncan Idaho, the secondary father figure to Paul, he gives his life defending them as well, which that one hurts a little bit because why not just close the blast doors and try to get away with them? Like, like I don't know what the outcome would have been uh, since there were only two seats on that ship and Liet Kynes uh, wound up dead, but it felt like the blast doors was going to take a while to get through anyway, right? So yeah, uh, poor Liet Kynes, uh, she was really cool. I guess that's the problem with Worm Uber, it just doesn't arrive fast enough and... Uh, yeah, and uh, you could tell how much influence Dune had on future science fiction. The most obvious one, I think, being Star Wars, The Voice, uh, and The Force have some similarities for sure. Uh, I don't know if it's reaching to say Sandworms and the Sarlacc Pits. I feel like that's clearly inspired as well. Also, I've played all the mainline Final Fantasy games outside of the MMOs, and the Sandworm that's been present, uh, the Sandworm has been present in almost all of them. And uh, there are some other Star Wars references in Final Fantasy, like uh, there are frequently characters names B named Biggs and Wedge. So I thought like, oh, maybe uh, they got the sandworm idea from the Sarlacc pit in Star Wars. But after watching this, uh, I know the Sarlacc pits were based on sandworms. So I wonder if Final Fantasy uh, went from, if they were inspired by Star Wars or if they were inspired directly by uh, Dune in the first place. And uh, yeah, those helicopters with those hummingbird wings. I wonder if that's a straight line from those to the hummingbird, uh, hummingbird mecha suits in Legend of Korra. Uh, because yeah, I have to, I've heard that this was the inspiration for so much science fiction out there and I can totally see it. I can see what people are saying for sure. And uh, I think the only major complaint I had have about this film isn't a real complaint. It's just that it's the first part and I need to see more. So when I recorded this reaction, the movie hadn't been greenlit yet, but right before I recorded this commentary, it did. It was greenlit, so yay. Um, but yeah, I came out of this film thinking, like, I thought there was going to be more Zendaya. Uh, you see her a lot in the promotion of it, but she's barely in the film. So I was, I was promised more Zendaya, I feel like. So now that there's going to be a second film, we're going to see a lot more of her and her relationship with Paul. Uh, so I'll be looking forward to that and... Uh, yeah, more Zendaya would be great. I wish she would almost kiss me and then stab me. That's the dream. Mostly joking, but um, can you imagine Paul in his vision like slinking to the ground after being stabbed and just then just being like, worth it? I don't know why my mind went there, but anyway. Uh, for what this movie is though, just part one of two, it does its, does its job in a fantastic way. Uh, it's just such a cool, cool movie. Complete visual audio treat. Uh, great cinematography, great music by Hans Zimmer as per usual. Um, Really compelling characters. If only they didn't kill all of them off. Ugh. And Paul is a really likable character. He clearly yearns for peace. Um, and because of the world he's in, he's forced to uh, turn back on that. That conversation he had with his father about not wanting this. And then, yeah, leaders don't want to be leaders necessarily. The best leaders don't want to be ne leaders necessarily. So uh, I thought that was a really compelling storyline as well. So we'll see how that all works out. I'm going to give this a 9.5 out of 10 because it does feel incomplete, but I could easily see that going to a 10 once I see how all the groundwork laid down here will be paid off in the conclusion. So October 2023, two years from now, cannot wait. And uh, yeah, there's still so much more to these worlds. Worlds We've uh, barely started to get to know about the Fremens and their ways. Uh, we've seen them pop up out of the sand. We've seen them ride sandworms. So what else are they capable of? And uh Obviously, I want to see House Harkonnen get taken down for what they did to House Atreides, but there's still so many more houses to learn about, and part two feels way too early for this, but how can we somehow take it to the Emperor somewhere down the line as well, and uh, how will the Bene Gesserit continue to influence things going forward, and uh, yeah, more Zendaya, so Zendaya, Zendaya, shoot, Zendaya, I said it right before, but then got confused, anyway. Thanks, friends, for watching. This was really fun. Uh, full reaction on Patreon in the link in the description below. Leave a like. really helps with the channel. And I will see you guys next time with another movie reaction. Bye, friends.